wouldn't go near. Yeah, you, you greedy things, I Yara says. Last time I throw bread out there, and they were watching. I just, and next day they came down, and one piece of bread isn't enough for them. They're going to have two or three in their beak, picking it up and on wheel, you know. And the wee birds came in and laughed, laughed, but there was still stuff for them. What an illustration of the gospel. Everything like this, is, to me, is illustrations, you know. Mm. You know, take the word of God while it's there, Amen. and don't let the Amen. devil come in and steal it. Yes. <laughs> you know, a real illustration. And then I was watching one of our cats. We have three cats. And we put bread out sometimes, you know. And uh, one of the cats, he's a terror for killing things, you know, birds and stuff. He's sitting up in the hedge, behind the hedge. And he's watching. He knows well where the birds come down. But while he's there, they won't come down. <laughs> you know, another, another illustration. See, but he's hiding sometimes and they don't see him and, and now and again you'll see him with a bird in his mouth don't do that in illustration be very wary yes. of the tricks of satan you know he's always in the wings waiting we talking a bit about him this morning you know we're living in wonderful days i was up at the diamond yesterday and a woman stopped me from balana and she was a christian and we were talking about various things in the scripture and she said what about revival? I said, oh, what? Revival, up my street. What do you know about revival? I said, do you ever read that book, Sounds from Heaven? Oh, I'm, I never done reading it, she says. <laughs> Praise God, I said, this is great. Let's have a revival in the street. Hallelujah. And we started talking about the wonderful move of God uh, with the faith mission, and we have one this morning. Every time there's a faith mission person here, something happens. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not afraid to say things. <laughs> but we had a great discussion about the power of God let loose in the highlands of Scotland, you know, Amen. of all places. You know, there was, a, there was a time you wouldn't go up there even on your holidays <laughs> years ago, you know, it was a wild place. That's right. But the, the Isle of Lewis, Isle of Skye, power of God just came down. You know, and resting on the people, and there was conviction all over the place. Powerful mood. And we were just saying, we were just talking yesterday, we said, that's what we need today. Yes. The power of God let loose. Amen. See, the, the, Scot, the, 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 you know, the gospel is still the same today, and the message is still the same. It's not different. <laughs> Hebrews 13 tells us that Jesus Christ, he's the same yes. yesterday, yes. and today, and forever. The gospel does not change, and nobody can change it. The same word, the same message, the same Jesus. If the church never existed, Jesus would still be there. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's the one we go to yeah. yes. when we're in trouble. Amen. He's the one that's praying for us, making intercession for us all the time. What a saviour we've got. Powerful saviour. I just want to turn our attention to to um, Luke's Gospel. And this is a chapter 22, verse 31. Now, you know, Peter was a favourite of mine. You know, fisherman, rough man. He wasn't a softy. And he was in bother one time. And we read it from verse 31. And we just want to see how how Jesus dealt with this man when he let him down. See, many times, I suppose we could all say we let the Lord down somewhere, but sometimes we let the Lord down very bad, very bad, you know. And uh, sometimes young Christian, when I was a young Christian, I wasn't a great fellow either. You know, I just did my own thing most of the time and got into bother and trouble here and there and until I learned that God was so merciful. Yes. Oh, so merciful. Just read this and see what Peter did. We just pick it up in verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you. Now, do you see that? Satan has asked for you. It's something like Job's story. When Satan said to, to God, have you considered your servant Job? Mm -hmm. Let me at him for a while. Yes. Now, 
That still must go on today. Maybe it goes on about us here this morning. Maybe it seems as if Jesus was in contact with Satan. And he says, Peter, Satan has asked for you. Now how could he do that? See, Satan is a powerful being. There's no doubt about that. Very powerful. And he was asking for Peter. Let me at Peter for a while. Maybe he's doing the same for you and me. And I'm sure he has done in the past. Especially when we're backsliding. That's the time to look out. That's the time to watch out. And many's the time Christians have come to grief through this coldness, deadness and everything else. And Peter was convicted. And Satan knew his weakness and he was ready. Now this is not mythology or chronology or fairy tales. This is the real McCoy. Amen. We've got to realize this. When you're feeling down in yourself and things are going wrong, that's the time to watch out and believe what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth and the life. He'll give you the truth. And we're reading the truth here this morning as to what happens. Let's see it. Satan has asked for you that he may, he may sift you as wheat. Now remember this. Satan is alive and well. And he was taught about Satan, that evil spirit, with Jesus when they were out preaching. He saw Jesus working miracles and all sorts of wonderful things like he still does today. But even that, Peter still denied him further on in the gospel. <coughs> and the Bible says that he wept bitterly when he realized what he'd done. One of the gospels says that he, he cursed and he swore really back. And it goes on to say, Satan has asked me that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. That's tremendous. I have prayed for you. Now, bear in mind, every time Jesus prays, the prayers are always answered. Always answered. Why does he say he pray for us if the prayers are not going to be answered? That's ridiculous. This moment, he's making intercession for us. Mm -hmm. This very moment. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He's here yes. this morning. Yes. The power of the Lord is here this morning. Because he said he'd be here. Mm -hmm. Where two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. Still praying for us. And those prayers of, of Jesus will be answered for you and for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Why does he give us the, Lord, the Lord's prayer? Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. <laughs> Reality, if we say it right and believe it. It all goes down to our belief and our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we don't believe, Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. That's right. If you don't believe, then you need to start believing. Especially in the world today. That Satan may sift you as wheat. Oh, sift, that's an awful thing to say, isn't it? But I have prayed for you. Now listen to that your faith should not fail. See it? You've got weak faith this morning. Start praying and get that faith yeah. risen up. Hallelujah. And whoever's listening to this service this morning, the same to you. If your faith is down, Peter was on the verge of going away from the Lord. Maybe there's people listening to this service, you're the same. You're feeling so bad that you just want to turn your back on the Lord. Well, no, you don't do that. Yes. Do what Peter did. He came to Jesus. And Jesus told him the truth. And bear in mind, he did not criticize Peter for his backsliding. You know, you often hear some evangelist, he lets the Lord down and some big thing he does wrong or maybe sexual or maybe money matters or something like that. The next thing blazed all over the place. You know, but bear in mind, now, Jesus could have said that about Peter, but he didn't. Yes. He told him the real truth. He said, Satan, Satan is after you, Peter. And sometimes with these people, 
let the Lord down. You know, all the talk starts, this, that, and the other. But what we've got to remember is this. If I criticise you on something, maybe something you've done, it might be my turn next week. Remember that. That's a good thing to remember. See? And sometimes some of these people who have done that got into the same sin themselves. But be very, very careful. Eh? You go to him. Praise God. <laughs> look, at the, look at the advice that he gave to, to Peter. And he told him the very, the very truth what was going on. Satan has desired to have you, Peter. But I pray for you. Now listen to this. I love this bit here. Listen to it. That your faith should not fail. But when you have returned to me, yeah. strengthen your brethren. That's right. Now do you see the prayer being answered before it was even answered? Jesus believed. See, it was answered before he even finished. See it? But I have prayed for you. And when you come back to me, when you return to me, strengthen your brethren. See that? That tremendous, it's not a tremendous saying from Jesus. He didn't criticize him. He expected him to come back. Amen. He expected him to come back because he prayed for him. And he expects the same for us. If you're feeling low this morning, maybe you haven't prayed. And that's the way we get something. We haven't read the Bible. Maybe all the, the, the hymn, singing the hymns doesn't do a lot of good for us. Maybe you're in that category this morning. Maybe you're on the verge of turning your back. No. Listen to what Jesus says. I prayed for you. And when you come back to me, strengthen your brethren. That's how powerful Peter was going to be. See? What a saviour we've got. That God does not give up on any of us. No matter who you are this morning. No matter what's wrong. He will not give up. But your faith must not weaken. Praise God. Your faith cannot weaken. If you have weak faith, you need to build it up. That's why we have fellowship one with another. Yeah. Praise God. Mm -hmm. See, we have to have fellowship. We have to come along and sing the chorus and the lovely chorus this morning on the blood of Jesus. That really, you know, the excitement rises all the time. And the power of God is getting ready. Hallelujah. I love that. Yeah. Sometimes you hear people, we were, we were in there praying for hours till we broke through. What do you break through? Powers of darkness. That's what we break through. That's a wonderful thing. To break through into the very throne room of God. That's what we need to do. Praise God. I remember when I, when I had this prostrate thing. Uh, oh, because it was terrible. The pain was dreadful. I said, oh, hey, Lord. Who could I go to? What could I do here? <laughs> Believe the gospel. Now, I heard people saying, and some of the documentaries I've watched. God doesn't work like that today. There's no such thing as laying on of hands. Prayer cloth ministry went out the window with the apostles. All this stuff. I hope you don't believe that nonsense. Because if that was true, I wouldn't be here today. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Some of us may be the same. But you see, I had a faith to believe. Yeah. See, it hasn't gone all together. Right. Went after God. And the Bible says, if you did, diligently seek the Lord, he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. <clears throat> God is a rewarder. See? And he rewards us. Praise God. We don't deserve it, but Jesus took it all for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. That Amen. tremendous stuff. Amen. And you're down. <coughs> and Satan's coming along this time. Remember, it wasn't spirits. It was Satan himself was coming to Peter. Oh man, I tell you what a, what a saviour. And let's just look further on to the book of Acts. Let's see the sort of man he was. Praise God. Acts 3, I think it is, yeah. Now, what a different person after Pentecost. Well, let's get chapter 2 first of, of, and uh, just remind ourselves of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, it says there was, a, there was supposed to be 120 here, but there would have been a lot more Christians than that, but half of them probably didn't go. They missed out. 
Could have been hundreds of them, but they weren't there. See, that's something when God's moving, you see, they missed out on something great. There came a sound from heaven as if a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them this divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. See that? And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And verse 14, there was a lot of unbelief with all the people outside and all the rest of it. Listen to it. Peter standing up. Notice, Peter. Now look at him. Now look at this man, this fisherman. Look at him now that cried and wept his way to Jesus. Look at him now. Standing up. This is his sermon. Look. Standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And so on. We know all these things. But isn't this tremendous? There's Peter now. That, see the difference. See the difference the power of God makes. Go out of your way. No matter how you feel this morning, go out of your way. If you have to pray all night, get that power of God working in your life. And do not let your faith go anyway. Keep on because God said it. And that settles it. Praise the Lord. Amen. I have a, a verse of scripture up there. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. People stuck on the rock. <laughs> oh, All the chat and the talk to themselves, you know. And I, it's a great, a great verse of scripture, you know. God said it. And he said it to us this morning. That your faith fail you not. Now what's the reason your faith is failing you? All sorts of things. But if we could just rise above all that. Praise the Lord. Here's the outcome. Oh, it's great. Isn't it? How Peter, what a difference in a man. Oh, hallelujah. And then we just go over to um, chapter 2, verse uh, yeah, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucify, both the Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Praise the Lord. That's great, isn't it? Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now listen to this. For the promise is to you, to your children, Amen. and to all who are afar off. That's us! Praise God! That's us! People didn't, Peter didn't know who we were. We'd meet him one day and we'd say, thanks very much for that word, Peter. Tremendous sermon. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you built us up that Sunday morning. See? To those who were afar off. Praise God. That's tremendous, isn't it? All of us here this morning. Amen. The power of God is available to us this morning. And to you as well. Listening to this. We're not here because of denominations or anything like that. We're listening and believing the word of God. Amen. Amen. Undiluted. Yes. Praise God. Yes. yes. Seen so much of that nonsense going on today. You know, denominations arguing over doctrine. We're not supposed to be at that. We're supposed to be putting the doctrines into practice. Amen. And this is one of them. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you can speak in tongues. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's still on the go. It didn't go out with the apostles. In case you believe that. Yes. You want to come up to the corner on a Wednesday and have a, have a talk with me anytime you want. Whether you're a Mormon or Jehovah Witness or who you are. You come up and you show me from the word of God where it doesn't say that. And I show you where it does. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, Pastor Gordon. Amen. Keep looking up. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. The promise is to you. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. Then those who gladly received the word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. See that? Because they obeyed God. 
See, there's Peter now right in the middle of it all. A man who wept bitterly. Because Jesus spoke to him. But he built Peter up again. He does the same for us. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. In fellowship. In the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together. And all things in common. See that. Now go down to chapter 3. Here's Peter again. What a tremendous fellow. And look at the epistles he wrote. The powerful epistles. The wonderful verse he's got. The Satan goes around like a roaring lion seeking to whom he may devour. You know, think it not strange when all these fiery darts of the wicked come. See, because he's been through it. He could write that. Praise God. That's right. Apply it to our own lives. Think it not strange. Praise God. Let's look to him who loved us. Gave himself for us. Just what it says here now. Here's Peter again. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. The ninth hour they were together. Notice that. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple. Which is called beautiful. To ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who seeing Peter. And John, different Peter and John, about to go into the temple, asked for arms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. He didn't say, go away, go away, I have no power. He didn't just pat him on the head and say, I will pray for you, you'll be all right. He didn't do that. He did what Jesus taught him to do. And we do what Jesus teaches to do. And what the Holy Spirit, Jesus said he Send the comforter. Teaches all things. Teaches the truth. Anything that comes from the Holy Spirit, the truth. It's not made, made the up or anything that ends like that. It's the real power of the Holy Ghost. Listen to it. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have. But what I have, I give you. What did he have? What did he have? What flowed in his veins? What flowed through his hands? Power of God. Mm -hmm. The resurrected Jesus. Doing what Jesus taught him. What tremendous, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What could happen this morning? We don't know. Anything could happen. If our faith fails us not. Yes. Oh, praise God. Because I heard a, a friend of mine, an evangelist, praying for a wee boy who had no, he was born with no hair. And he was prayed with. A fortnight later, his hair was growing. And he had a lovely head of hair a few months later. And he came back to the same evangelist a few weeks later and says, Peter, he says, I'm at, I'm at school. People are laughing at me because my hair is all straight. I wonder, could you make a difference? And he prayed over him. <laughs> and a few weeks, his hair went curly. <laughs> That's our God. <laughs> God's got a sense of humour. <laughs> Praise God. That's true. Yes. Great testimony. Huh? You can ask God anything. <laughs> I do it. Uh, like uh, reading a story on missions. People out in the way out in the desert, they, they ran out of petrol for some reason or another. Real, real missionary story. And they prayed. And all they had in the tank, in the boot, was, a, was a, a can with full of water. And God said, put the water into the tank. Mm -hmm. And they did. And that brought them home. Mm -hmm. Praise God. That amazing. Yeah. Let's try that, Tony. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On your way home, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Missionaries. Praise God. I hear stories like that. They're great stories to read. Build your faith up. Anything can happen. Praise God. Huh? Yeah. In, he says, here, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand. Notice his hand again. Lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now this is written by Luke. They're medical terms. His feet and ankle bones received strength. See that? Praise God. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them. 
Walking, leaping, listen to it, and praising God. See that? Praising God. Who else would he praise? And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now, is that tremendous, isn't it? Yes. That's what Peter had. And we're Christians today, filled with the Holy Ghost. We have got the same. But you see, sometimes our faith is failing us. When we come, come up against the powers of darkness. Now, we, we've, we've heard what Peter and John did in the name of Jesus. Now, remember this. Satan has got many, many names. And they're not just nicknames. They're real terrible names. I'll read some of them out in a moment. And it makes us realise what we're up against. There used to be a cherub, remember that, in the throne of God. Standing, standing beside God, a cherub angel, at one time. He had, every, he, had, he had everything. God gave him everything. He lost it all through sin. That's why he hates you and I, because we've got everything through the cross. Praise God. Anything he can do, he'd do it against you and I. Yes. Anything. Yes. Make no mistake about this. That's something you've got to realise. You know, always realise that. Let's just read some of the, the names he's got. Now, these are not nicknames. I, I remember when I was going to school in Sligo years ago, I had a nickname. Now, Cochran. So my nickname was Corky. Here's Corky. <laughs> and even now when I'm down the town, people maybe as old as I am, ah, here's Corky. I know Corky. <laughs> it never goes, never leaves. And the nickname's flying everywhere, isn't there? During the last war, I used to be sitting in huts with, with, not, with fellas just after the last war. And they'd be talking about, uh, you know, the nicknames for all different soldiers. They used to call the, the German, the Jerrys, or Krauts. Yeah. <laughs> They were always eating sort of sauerkraut. That's where that name comes. And some of the, the, the men, the ex-soldiers, they were in Burma fighting the Japanese. They used to call the Japanese nips. They were so nippy, burning out of the bushes and all. And uh, the Russians were called ruskies. And the French were called frogs, froggies and all this. They were nicknames, just nicknames, you know. <laughs> so we probably got them here as well, you know. But these, these names here are not nicknames. Listen to what the Bible says about Satan. Right? Now listen to this. He's called Prince of Darkness. I'll read them out. The God of this age. He's called King, Revelation 9 11. Ruler of darkness. Cherub. You find that in Isaiah 14 12. Angel of light. Lucifer. Son of the morning. Devil, Satan, dragon, Beelzebub, prince of devils, liar, adversary, roaring lion. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. There are just a couple of, you see that. Accuser of the brethren, of you and me. Right? Call our enemy, our tempter, wicked one, thief, murderer. Now can you imagine having nicknames like that? Imagine if somebody put all those nicknames on me, how I'd feel. That goes to show you how evil this one is. And you've got to realise that. He is an evil being. He wants, to, he wants rid of you anyway. That's, that's what you've got to remember. Right? And uh, in John chapter 8, verse 31. Let's have a look at that for a moment. John 8, 31. Praise God. And we've got to realise this. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, see, if you abide in my word, right, you are my disciples indeed. This word here. See it? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
See it? <clears throat> this is it, this word here. That's how important it is. It tells us everything we need to know about life. If we, we, you know, we disregard this at our peril. We get lazy in reading this. She said, if you abide in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. See, and all this stuff that we read about Satan, we've got more power. Oh, we've got the power of the Holy Spirit. We've got the name of Jesus. Philippines chapter 2, verse 9. Powerful things. Powerful, powerful scriptures. In the name of Jesus. Who we are in Christ. Oh, what a Savior. What a wonderful Savior we are. We've got an absolute everything belongs to us in Christ. We are complete in Him. The head of principalities and powers. Amen. But that's a wonderful word. Free indeed. If you know the truth, you'll be free indeed. See that? And that's how we know. See? Power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. This is our word. Your word and my word. See? We've got the victory over all those names. They're all the things that he wants to do to us. Yeah. And God's got something in store for all liars, and he's one of them. No? Tells lies all the time. He destroys whole nations yeah. with his lies. Mm -hmm. And it's coming up all now. You see it all coming to pass now. And you'll see the powers of darkness coming. Coming on and coming on. We, we, don't be afraid. Yeah. Sit tight and believe the word of God. What's going on in the world today? We can build our faith up reading the word of God. Don't be afraid. Just keep going on. And no matter what comes your way. Hold fast, hold tight. Get people to pray for you. Believe the gospel. That's what, the, that's what we're told to do. Believe the gospel. Amen. Those two men, Peter and John, they prayed for that man. They knew exactly. They had the name of Je in the name of Jesus. See? And that name to you and I this morning is more powerful than all those nicknames or whatever you call them. All those terrible names that Satan's got more power than all of them rolled in a ball. We've got one name. Jesus. God has given us a name above all names. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Oh, we should be delighted this morning. Amen. That we can use that name <coughs> in reality. Amen. See, it was when we grow cold, Amen. like Peter did. Now he repented in tears. Sometimes it takes that. I'm reading about the revival. Uh, in the Hebrides or any other revival. <clears throat> and the first thing that happened was people were broken down under a conviction of sin. Christians, because they were careless and slap happy. And some of them spent all night crying out to God for forgiveness. All night! And God just lifted them up, lifted them up. It was bringing chairs up to the church to make sure they got a seat. <laughs> Tremendous, isn't it? <laughs> you couldn't get them out of the church in those days. We can't get them in today. Couldn't get them out. There were so many, hundreds, hundreds coming in. Five, six, seven hundred at a time coming into the church. <laughs> Praise God. That's how real it all was. No matter how real Satan is, we have the victory over him. Amen. Amen. All those names. They're dreadful names, I guess. They're awful names. But praise the Lord, we're still here. And we love the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. What a Savior we've got. You know, the Bible talks about Jesus being tempted in the Scriptures, you know. And it says Satan departed them for a while. For a while. That means he, he was coming back again. Even though we could do that to Jesus, what about us? He'd depart for a while, but he'd come back again. Yeah. He'll always come back. Yeah. He'll have, he have another go at you. Will, yeah. Oh, brother, sometimes I, I don't know how you feel, but sometimes when I get down to pray, oh, it's like hell was sitting on my head. Yeah. I feel like just thrown out with fear. Oh, the whole place is literally plagued with fear. That's right. That's the powers of darkness coming in. Mm. You come back. That doesn't mean he's going to take you over. That doesn't mean he's going to take Peter over. But he was going to have a good crack at it. Desired to have you, Peter. And he desired to have us to keep praying, pray, pray and pray and pray through. Break through. Amen. Till the power of God yeah. comes in. 
I remember a friend of mine was telling me he was called to a school in Birmingham and um, it was haunted. There was, there was people there washing the floor and all, some, some of the ladies, you know. And they saw this woman walking across the hall, went right through the wall. And they, they couldn't believe it. This is the reality of these things. And they said, hey, I'm not coming back to this school to do this until something's done about this. So they sent for my friend, <coughs> Mangerus. He brought a team along. And they went around all the rooms. Walked in all the rooms, about five or six rooms. They, they walked into one room. It was cold as ice. Dreadful, dreadful, hellish feeling. I said, ah, this is where the spirit is. So they had a communion service. Broke the bread, read Psalm 91. And he said, the power of God just came down on that. The whole place was alive with the spirit of the living God. Amen. I'm telling you. Mm. And that spirit was gone. Mm. What brought that spirit in? Maybe people might have known somebody died or maybe they were using Ouija boards or something like that. Just in case you don't believe in haunted houses. The next one I go, you come along <laughs> and you'll soon find out. Mm. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> There's a spirit world out there, and it's a bad one. It is, yeah. If you don't believe in the gifts of the spirit, discerning your spirit's one of them. Peter walked in that. And all the apostles did, and the disciples, and the 70 also. And they weren't all the apostles. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord for reality and the truth of the gospel. So believe it. Just want to leave one little word with you. If you're cold and you're dead, then get back back into the front ranks of evangelism. Get back in. Do something for the Lord, and God will bless you. Hallelujah. Don't give up altogether. Peter didn't, because Jesus prayed for him. Get back, back to the Lord and ask him to come in and revive you in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Praise God. We just thank you, Lord, for the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Thank you for the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. We just pray for people here this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. We ask now that you'll bless them, Lord, with the, with the oil of gladness, Lord. Lift burdens from them, Lord. Hallelujah. Lift any, anybody that's down or depressed in Jesus' name, Lord. We ask you now, Lord, in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come and bless. Come and heal. Come and touch, Lord. Thank you, Lord, we can still touch the hem of your garment and be made whole. If only I could touch the hem of his garment, the wee woman said. If only. Jesus said, who touched me? I, I felt virtue going out of me. Praise God. That was the power of the Holy Spirit. Do it again this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Do it again this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. I ask, Lord. We ask, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bless this family of God, Lord. Praise God. Jesus. Bless this family of God, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord. The reality of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Amen. And we know, Lord, you're here, Lord, you're blessing and you're opening hearts and speaking to hearts this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Praise your wonderful name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for blessing. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Open the floodgates of heaven and come down and fill us, Lord to overflowing, Lord. Forgive us, Lord, if we're a little bit lax, Lord, and careless. This is not the time to be like that because the rapture, I suppose, could come any time. I don't think there'll be any warning for that. Just the signs of the times is enough. Praise God. Jesus says, look up. When these things come to pass, look up for your redemption draws near. And that's true. Praise God. So we thank you, Lord. For giving us the power over all the power of the enemy, Lord. And nothing shall by any means harm us. In Jesus' wonderful name we ask. The blessings of Israel, Lord, on this little fellowship this morning. In Jesus' name, Lord. Oh, shada baba shada baba shada baba Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Keep looking up. Jesus.